Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I welcome a guest who has been working in our community to help with various issues, including education reform. And that is what I want to talk about today. What is education? Why is it important? And why should an entrepreneur care? Admittedly, in this episode, I talk about my own educational battles, and these battles for me started at a very early age. But what is education anyways? Education by definition is the process of receiving or giving systematic instructions, especially at a school or university. Personally, I do not believe education is received at only a school or a university. I prefer the other definition of education, an enlightening experience. Now, first, let me take a step back and say I do not discourage higher education. Hell, I went to school and spent a pretty penny at Portland Community College, Portland State University, and Syracuse University to learn a great deal of what I'm sharing on these episodes, but I did not learn everything at school. Like the previous episode, education is like networking in that it helps a person hone in their skills by learning from experiences, and sometimes it is from those experiences of others that we learn the most. Take this podcast, for example. I hope my listeners are learning from these stories. These are real life entrepreneurs talking about their own experiences. I hope this podcast serves as a case study of various businesses, a digital version of the Harvard Business Review without the membership fees, if you will, and with stories that feel obtainable from owners we know from businesses we walk by in communities we live in. Think of education in three different forms, formal, informal, and non-formal. Formal education is the classroom and is mostly taught by qualified teachers or professionals that follow a curriculum. Informal education is just that, informal. Think of this as education learned outside of the academic institutions. These are more life lessons, skills or knowledge acquired at home from books, and yes, browsing the internet can be educational. Sometimes, anyone can put a podcast and state their opinion. Trust me, I know. But whether that information is truthful really determines, in my opinion, if that is educational or simply erroneous. Erroneous means wrong or incorrect. Non-formal education is a mixture of both formal and informal education, according to World Vision. These are educational programs, but not in an educational setting like a school. These are more community-based courses, short programs, or vocational training. Vocational training is education that prepares people to work as a technician or to take an employment in a skilled craft or trade. But why is education important? Problem-solving skills, economic growth, self-reliance, and empowerment. There are so many benefits to education, whether that is informal, formal, or non-formal. Bruce Lee once famously said, instead of buying your children all the things that you never had, you should teach them all the things you were never taught. Material wears out, but knowledge stays. And that is why an entrepreneur should care. According to the United Nations Educational Science and Cultural Education Study conducted in 2011, if all students in low-income countries acquired basic reading skills before leaving school, 171 million people could be lifted out of poverty. But education is not just about living above the poverty line. Education is about the quality of life. It is about feeling comfortable making an informed decision and having the confidence to continue to learn if we fail. As I've stated before, I have never failed a day in my life. I have either learned or I have succeeded. Even in school, I never failed, even though some may have wished I would have. Instead, I got more educated, obtained more knowledge, and built a stronger foundation for my future. And I hope every week when these episodes air, I add a layer to your foundation to build a stronger future together. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. My next 
Next Gas Apparel Company amplifies tough social justice conversations and allows people to wear their truth. Motivated to end systematic racism, please welcome the owner and creative director of Mimas Fresh Teas, Camila Adams. This episode is sponsored in part by Burnside Knives, essential tools for outdoor enthusiasts and working professionals like yourself. Visit BurnsideKnives.com. Your knife says a lot about you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I have a very special guest, which I'm very excited. I recently visited this store. I really believe this is a truly inspirational story. Camila Adams from Mimi's Fresh Teas. How are we doing? I am doing great. How are you doing? I'm so excited about this because I took the family over to your shop. We got I got some swag, right? And and I'm really excited about your story because it's it's more than just a t-shirt. But first, let's introduce the world. Please introduce the world to you. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Camila Adams, owner of Mimi's Fresh Teas. Camila, where where are you from? Where'd you? Uh, let's talk about your career. Let's. How did you get to making teas? Well, I am a Portland native, and I graduated from Grand High School, went over, uh, started college at Portland Community College, and then transferred over to Portland State. Um, and I always had a passion for graphic design. Um, I always, you know, cared about the community and equality, especially when it comes to um, the education part of things. So uh, that's kind of how I started Baby's Fresh Teas in 2018, because I wanted people to wear their truth without uttering a word. So you started in 2018. Now, for the folks at home, what is Mimi's Fresh Teas? So Mimi's Fresh Teas is an apparel company that promotes social justice and women empowerment. And, and why, why was this concept so important for you to create? Well, I did a lot of volunteer work at PTA executive. At a local school, um, I was a vice president of racial equity and inclusion, and I just seen a lot of disparities in um, unequal education, especially when it came to black and brown children. So that is why I created Mimi's Fresh Teas, because a lot of times I was in the in a lot of meetings, and I was the only black woman there, and sometimes that could be a little exhausting. And so I was like, what if I could just express the way I felt without uttering a word. And that's when I came up with the concept of putting your feelings on your chest. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Now, one of the things you, you've mentioned, you know, you mentioned the social justice piece. So let's kind of talk about that because Mimi's is more than just a t-shirt. What else is it? Yeah. Um, you know, I really do feel strongly like we have to build honest, genuine relationships with community members um, in order to have these courageous conversations about race. And the reason I center race is because that's my own personal experience um, navigating this world as a, as a woman and, you know, a woman of color. So it's just real important to um, be community-based and, um, and just stand up for what you believe in. And hopefully we make small changes, but small changes are, you know, a lot better than no change at all. So that's why it's so important. That's, that's very true. In fact, you know, you mentioned changes. What, what kind of changes are you hoping to accomplish? I just really want to, um, I just want people to be aware of the challenges that a lot of people of color, black people in particular still face. In America right now and you know I I'm in a unique spot right now because I am advocating one of the things that I also do too is I advocate so right now I'm advocating with the school system on some things that need to change um, the health industry a few things that need to change and um, a lot of other major systems that seem to continue to racist ideology and these things need to just need to change and I'm just gonna be straight up and honest with you I mean some of these systems systemic racism I mean they're all they're on autopilot and how do we change these systems you know that's that's the real question how do we collectively change and flip these systems yeah I, I definitely agree in fact 
you know, one of the things you mentioned is there's, there's still this, a lot of, a lot of the community of colors are still going through a lot of, I'm not sure if it's animosity or aggression. I'm not sure what it is, right? We've, I can feel it, you know, as being Latino. I know the, our, you know, people of color community have been feeling it. What are some things that, what are some nuggets or some insights that we can share with individuals that maybe they are unaware of, that they just don't see the systematic racism? What, what are some things that you can point out and say, this is kind of what I mean? Yeah, you know, there's, let's see, how can I just break this down? Because there are quite a bit of things yeah. uh, just from what I am noticing. Um, you know, for example, just inequities. Let me just say this, for example, in the education system and how, um, you know, kids of color are still performing according to the test scores. Uh, lower than their white classmates. Mm. And that is not because these kids can't learn. It's simply because the system is failing the children. Yeah, yeah. And I I've, I will share some personal information myself. I, I will admit, when I was growing up, um, I was actually an IEP student, an individual education program. Uh, now, what mm. that means is, you know, they kind of, they essentially take you out of your room and say, hey, um, since you're unable to do these tests, we're going to take you to a different location. You'll have your, your test by yourself. And for an individual, especially like myself as being that youth, that, that kind of created this already, this division from my own classmates, right? Yeah. Where I was the only one being removed from this class to take these tests. And it made me feel dumb. Like it made me feel bad. And it wasn't yeah. until my sophomore year of high school or, or freshman year, where I was like, listen, if I'm going to fail these classes, let me fail them. But let me fail them with my classmates. Let me fail inside the same classroom that these other individuals are getting an opportunity to learn while I'm getting removed from my class to learn in a different way. Right? Absolutely. Now, what what has been hard about starting this business? Um, I believe one of the things that, you know, it wasn't really, let me take that back. It's not. It hasn't really been difficult because I'm passionate about it and this is what I love. Mm-hmm. So when you do what you love, doors open up. So you're aligned with your destiny and what you're supposed to be doing. Because some it's effortless of the things that I um, that I accomplish. Mm-hmm. Um, for example, you know, being awarded the Portland Business Journal um, Woman of Influence. You know, Gotta give you a clap. No Gotta idea. give you a clap for that one. <laughs> Let's go, baby. I've, I read that article. I remember seeing it in the Portland Business Journal. I was like, this is my girl. Yes. She made it. <laughs> I love it. Yes. And you know what? It came from community members who worked with me in the PTA who knew what I stand stood for, you know, the events that I curated in the community along with uh, a couple other uh, parent volunteers you know, like the African-American Walking Museum and the Back to School Cookout, you know, these things are, are, are this is what Mimi's Fresh Tea's core is, is like curating community events and um, to show in love to to everybody, to our people. Yes, yes. And what, now let's, let's switch it up. What has been easy about this process? Has there anything been easy? Uh, well, it's been easy, but you know what, to be honest, you know, one of the things that have been challenged and I just thought about it is COVID. Mm, yes. Uh, we constantly have to pivot. Um, I just recently paused in-person shopping just to keep uh, myself, my family, and community members safe. Um, you know, my mom is really ill and I don't want to take any, I don't want to, I don't want to affect her with anything because she's uh her immune system is definitely compromised right now so gotcha yeah so that's been a challenge um but what's been easy is just me um building relationships with uh people i don't even know like community members who come into the store or to market that part is easy for me because i'm um a chatty caddy so i love to talk and (laughs) so that's effortless for me I love it. Now, is this your first business? Yes, this is my first business. And and what, 
for the folks at home, because, you know, this is a show about entrepreneurship and trying to kind of educate them on like, hey, this is kind of how you start to sp- the business. What processes did you go, did you have to go through to get your business up and running? Well, you want to make sure that you come up with a mission statement and a concept for your business. Um, reserve your domain name. That's important. Mm-hmm. Uh, register your business uh, with the Secretary of State. Set up a um, business um, account and um, I think what more importantly do to though, do not put your personal address to register your business. Mm, this, this is yes, I this is something I think I need to learn. <laughs> so, yeah. well, now yeah. what, why why is why do you feel that is so important? Well, back in 2020, I received um, just horrifying death threats to my home address because that is where I registered my business. Um, in the state of Oregon, you can't use a PO box to register your business, and I understand why. But at the same time, too, it's like, you know, I thought I didn't. I knew racism existed, but when it shows it to your doorstep, that is um, something completely different. And I don't wish that on anyone. Yeah, that's, that's really scary. And for the folks that listen at home, I think we all, like, you know, I say this pretty consistently during this podcast and we're all going through a lot, you know, collectively, um, but we're not yeah. going through it individually. There are under, even though COVID has, has derailed a lot of in-person things or the capabilities of, of networking and so on and so forth, everybody's kind of having their, a rough time, Right. Now, mm-hmm. now you, one of the things actually you mentioned was COVID. How has, and, and pivoting, right, during these during this process, how has Mimi's Fresh Cheese been able to pivot and kind of keep moving forward during this pandemic? We just have to do things as safe as possible. Um, you, you know, my business started solely online, and most of my sales are still online. So I just, um, I've offered a curbside pickup and things of that nature, but I really do right now at this time just encourage people to shop online because for a while there weren't any markets uh, happening and things like that. And a lot of uh, businesses, including mine, was hit pretty hard when that happened um, because you do need, it's not enough to have a website, but you also know how to, you have to know how to market Mm, um, yeah. your website, you have to have the right SEOs in your website to drive people to your website. So there's a lot of factors that go into this and, um, you know, but we make it happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so and that's you know, that's, that's a great, great segue into this next question. How do you market yourself? You, you mentioned you started your brand online. How did you market yourself and the brand? You know, I just for I just went out in the community and was talking to people and sharing. Um, a lot of the marketing was organic too, though. Uh, my friends, community members, family, um, news outlets, articles. I mean, there was definitely a plethora of things that really promoted Mimi's fresh teas. And um, organic marketing, in my opinion, is the best marketing. Yes, and you know, I must admit, folks at home, if, if for those listening. If you have not yet, please check out Mimi's Fresh Cheese on Instagram. It really, she really does have some really cool clothing, but not more than that. She really has some awesome videos. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> she has some great <laughs> videos. I love the content on 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 the Instagram. Very something I inspired to do. Now, Thank you. now where where do you see Mimi's Fresh Cheese moving forward? Maybe the next year or two, or maybe five years, ten years down the line. Yeah. Well, I would love to just have like a big warehouse space and just really slowly just drive everything online because I believe strongly that uh, online is our future, online shopping, but at the same time to just continue to curate and do uh, special events that center uh, racial equity. That's still important. Um, and Black Lives Matter isn't trending no more. So sometimes I feel like people forget that mm. that's still a thing. It still matters. Yeah. So. so for the folks at home, how could they get involved? Well, you can shop Mimi's Fresh Seeds, PDX.com. Uh, I usually post events on there. Um, I'll let you know what I'm going to curate at the store. 
uh, like this past holiday season, I curated uh, with a friend, uh, Jasmine from A Song Skin Care. Uh, we curated a women's holiday collective, and we had over 10 um, women entrepreneurs in my space uh, for, for about six weeks. And it was just amazing, just uh, the community, just a small little community that we had in Mimi's Fresh Teas and, and how uh, community members came down there and shopped. It, it was like a little mini one-stop shop, and we had candles, body cream, pretty much everything, masks toys. Love yeah. it. I love it. Now, you know, you've, you've kind of, you've come a long way. You said you started, believe it is 2018, started online, slowly progressing. Was there ever a moment of self doubt that maybe this company would not make it? Oh yeah. I think, um, it's natural to doubt about like, am I really doing this? Yeah. Right. Um, you know, I have, doubts all the time but we have to get past that doubt you have to keep moving uh, because there are a lot of uh, clothing brands out there but there's nothing like you you are always unique to your own brand and genuine to your own brand that is very very true and and so you, you mentioned that you just recently had a workshop with with 10 other female entrepreneurs what advice would you give to aspiring entrepreneurs I would say you have to be genuine to yourself. Um, don't, I know it's easier said than done, but try not to doubt yourself. Just be kind to yourself. Be patient with your business. Um, and if you're passionate about it and you love it, things will just align naturally for you. And, and for the listeners at home, you, you really mentioned the, uh, the webpage, but how can they, you know, really make sure they're following your product, make sure they're accessing your product? How can they help support your brand? And support Mimi Fresh Teas by by sharing, maybe even sharing your story. Um, just kind of like checking in with us on Instagram or Twitter or even TikTok. Um, I might even I'm working on maybe coming out with a digital blog, just to kind of like just share some different concepts and and to continue to educate people on qualities that are happening nice now i must admit i see you a lot on the different socials everybody keeps telling me i need to get a tiktok do you like the tiktok you know i do i like tiktok <laughs> because you can just be your you can just be your silly self i love I it mean, yeah. you sometimes you have you have to get uncomfortable right so tiktok really made me uncomfortable but and so did twitter too but you have to step out of um your comfort zone Man, that, that's such a great point. I think just growing, right, as an adult, there are going to be times where you're going to have to get outside for your comfort zone. In fact, you tend to grow more when you're outside of a comfort zone. A great example of this is traveling, in my opinion, you know, world traveling, right? If you, if you go to a foreign country that you do not know the language, you're going to grow pretty quickly because you're going to need to adapt, right? You're yeah. going to need to adapt to their culture, you need to adapt to their language, and you're going to kind of grow that experience pretty quickly. And I think that's a very, very important thing is, is just experiencing different experiences is going to help you grow. Yeah, absolutely. You know, a lot of people don't know, but I'm cam- I'm really camera shy. I don't believe it. But I, had- I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get over that because I'm like, I am the face of this brand, so yes, you, you better are. just and, Get and, it together, girl. <laughs> and you're starting, I, I'm going to, I'm going to be honest with you. You're starting to become a face of our community, my friend. I, I see you, you know, working with, you know, appointed uh, members of Congress. And I, I see you out in the community organically growing this business. I see you interacting with individuals that it, it's just inspiring to me. Really. It truly is. I, I'm, I'm, I'm watching you from afar, my friend, and I'm just cheering you on with oh, great, great vigor. Like we, you got this. I'm, let me know what I can do to support you because your brand is very important to the community. And I think what you're doing is very important in ensuring that the message is continuing to, to your point, you know, BLM is no longer trending, right? But that doesn't mean it's still not important. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, too, I think uh, one of the things that is also not talked about is sometimes you have to be careful with posting um, certain things on Instagram because you can be shadow banned. Oh, interesting. Let's let's talk what what is for the folks at home, what is shadow band? Shadow band is basically is like your account. Um, it doesn't reach as many people on Instagram and sometimes they, it could actually just be blocked. 
And what, what would kind of trigger those? Do you know? For example, um, I wanted to promote my Make Races a Wrong Again shirt, and then I wanted to pay for promotion on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Well, that promotion was denied several times uh, because it was too political. And, of course, it's, um, it's not a real person who's denying this, but it's a computer system, right, on Instagram. And I just thought that was kind of interesting. Um, and sometimes certain hashtags that you use might be considered too political. So just something to watch and be aware of. Yeah, and I must admit, I have been um, shadow banned as well <laughs> on Instagram. Oh, really? Uh, one of my episodes of the the founder of Iltopia Studio, Stephen Christensen, he actually had a really great project that he worked here in Oregon um, during the George Floyd um, killing. Mm. And because George Floyd, the name was mentioned on the sound clip, I was unable to promote it because that mm. was considered too political. Yeah. That's unfortunate. I love his work, by the way, too. It's Steven's awesome. Steven, it's yeah. interesting. Just so Steven, if you're listening, I got to give you a shout out real quick because this young man is not only the creator and founder of Iltopia Studios, he's mm -hmm. also studying to be a doctor right now. I know. That's <laughs> <impressive>. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just trying to run a podcast, Steven. Come on. Man. Yeah. <laughs> but this also. I the, get overwhelmed if I have a bad day. So, oh my gosh. Right. Right. But again, I think. <laughs> To your point, the fact that you know Stephen and his work really is is a testament again to your connection to the community. Honestly, because mm -hmm. Stephen, I don't think a lot of people are probably like, what? "What?" If you guys haven't, please go back and listen to the creator and founder of Iltopia Studio, Stephen Christensen. Great episode, super intelligent individual, and he has some imm immaculate work. Um, you can mm -hmm. you can find it online as well. But yeah. black superheroes matter. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I love it. Now, before we leave, is there anything that you want to tell the guest at home? This is your your platform. You know what? I just want to say let's just uh, continue to build community together um, because we are stronger together. Mm. The owner of Mimi's Fresh Teas. Thank you for tuning in to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow the Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.